295 Pleasant Street. Uh, my family and I purchased that home in 2008, and we are the parcel, I guess, Mr. Cherry referred to as the most impacted in terms of proximity to uh, the proposed day surgery center. But uh, the reason I'm chiming in so here is- Sorry, so you're right next door? Right next door, yeah, right to the east. Yeah. Um, the reason I'm chiming in is just to point out that we're gonna cycle through that all the neighbors in the rezoning area cooperated on this uh, presentation, so we're gonna cycle up here and give testimony. Absolutely. Uh, I'm sure you're well familiar with this, but the criteria for plan planning board review of a proposed uh, amendment to zoning, those are all listed here. The highlighted, uh, the highlighted points are the ones we feel are most relevant, particularly to our cause, and we're gonna go through those one at a time. Uh, starting with the consistency of the proposed amendment with the master plan from Brendan Ryder. Well, we've got your name, so we don't even need to <laughs> yeah, your name. Uh, thanks for um, having us, and I know it's a long night, and no, I'm here for work. I actually have to be working two hours. Um, <laughs> But uh, was, I just so want to get you on first, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, which they get rid of me sooner. Um, but no, I just want to, even before I speak to the master plan in and of itself, I just want to you know, preface, and I think I speak for a majority of us, um, no one here is debating the, the benefit and the need and the, the I, I think even Mr. Kerry spoke to the fact that this is a good, it's not a bad debate to have, right? I mean, we're all sitting here talking about a, a an expansion of a of a well reputed practice that 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 provides a service that it's a good thing. So I, I don't want any. I mean, are we emotional? Yes. Um, you know, are we invested? Yes, even more so than practitioners that probably don't live here. But we'll, you know, but none of us are negating the fact that in 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 debate that Concord Peters is a, a reputable practice. It contributes to our community. Expansion is not a bad thing. Um, with that in mind, and and I think if where's where my part comes in, if one looks critically and objectively at the master plan, which though I know is not legally binding in and of itself, but it is per the RSA what the planning and the council defers to for, for at least guidance and, and direction. Um, if you look at it objectively, what currently exists in this part of Pleasant Street is exactly what the plan calls for and expansion that is being proposed is accounted for in other areas of the city and, 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 and looked for and, and, and basically accommodated. Um, so we all have access to the master plan. Everyone knows it's a, it's a big document. And I know people are checking out. It's, you know, we're getting, so I'm not going to sit here and, and go line item by line on through it. But what Jim does have is a link to what I basically extrapolated from the plan in terms of the, the, the key points that, that kind of highlight it. And um, I would actually just like to, to point out one of the things I appreciate you picked up on um, is, you know, we can talk about aesthetics, we can talk about, you know, parking, drainage, and, and all the things associated with the project, but the scope needs to be larger than that. The scope really is, I mean, this is a reason, I mean, we can cut through the fat and say, basically the decision before you in terms of what you recommend and then in turn the city council is do we want to basically cease to have this be a residential area and allow through attrition it to become a medical center um i mean we we can, we can sit and look at pictures and, and and talk about our horses and chickens all day but it, it, it's really what what we have before us um, obviously we live here we've invested in this area you know where we all stand um, you know, I can't, I you know, can't change that. But um, but anyway, I think that's what we're truly looking at here is is the larger, you know, picture. And I'm, and I'm glad that was recognized because um, I, that's really what what I think needs to be considered. Um, so anyway, I'll keep this brief, um, and uh, we'll we'll go from there. And if there's anyone from uh, zoning here, I do not have a permit for that little cabin. I'm building with my boys. Um, don't worry, it's mobile. I can move it. <laughs> It's not on a foundation. <laughs> I have one quick question yeah. for clarification. You're on the, uh, you're between the property and St. Paul's. Property. Correct, yeah. So, so, you're, so you're on the right, if I'm, let me back up, if I'm 
standing on Pleasant Street. You're on the left. Yeah. And you're on the right. I'm always so, right. So you perhaps <laughs> Mr. Carey can come over and stand between us. <laughs> yes, Mr. Carey. So if I understand properly, you are also the only one impacted uh, besides St. Paul's in one and two. Right. Yeah, we're yes. we're we're kind of in the in the sights. Um, okay. Just wanted so, to clarify that. Right. Yeah. So you're exactly right. And just for if you're staring and you're looking at 297, you know now. We have St. Paul's property does kind of create an L behind us that then butts up to, so it's not, you know, because the 297 property runs virtually uninterrupted back to White Farm. Um, so so we, we have our parcel, which is somewhat rectangular, and then St. Paul's goes between our property and their entrance, but then it, it jogs, it jogs what would be east behind which, ours. Which is why you may not be able to see it as much as you can. Correct, because we, we have, we have, a you know acreage and in, in, well not I shouldn't say acreage because that implies multiple um, but we have land between between us um, so, um, yeah you know, the words yeah. right. so in either scenario one as proposed by country orthopedics or scenario two you stand to probably see a uh, an increase in the value of your property as a sale for a medical center so why do you oppose this Good question. We're 1.64 acres, um, though this is all anecdotal. I mean, we're we're lay people doing this. You know, we we, we all work full time. We got kids. I, I coach two baseball. I, I wish I could invest more time in the particulars, um, but I can't. That said, anecdotally, from what we know and what we've seen from what it takes to be in compliance with with various elements of zoning, at 1.64 acres. If you were to try to come into my lot and buy it and do any kind of facility or practice or 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 commercial you know business you would actually have to have a smaller structure than i currently live in to then create parking to accommodate what your square footage would be so i you know i'm not trying to sound doomsday but for all intents and purposes institutionally speaking we're kind of useless um so that actually Number two alarms me equally, if not more so, because now I'm an institutional island between St. Paul's, Concord Ortho, and my 1.64 acres that is not real attractive for a commercial or institutional entity. And unless I bold face lie to some poor guy that's going to buy it for me, I, you know, I could, you know, as a residence, um, it's, it, I mean, I wouldn't have bought it. Okay. Thank you, Matt. No, no, sir. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so basically, the obviously the master plan. This is the, from the the current master plan. And um, if you want to go to the next one there, go to the link or whatever. Uh, the link Brendan's referring to. The his, his summary is included in the back of the. So you, you have a slide for slide uh, handout of the presentation, and following that is a master plan with the summary. Well, let me let me. I'll be candid here. I know we're we're kind of going you know in the name of brevity. I don't need to kind of even do this if 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 what you have in front of you is enough, and that you'll kind of look at the basic most of what I'm going to highlight is in bold. Um, I mean, I would love to kind of point out some of the the points, but I know it's late night, you know, and there's a lot of people here, and, and it's been made very clear that we need to at this point expedite. Um, no, no, we, we don't need to expedite. Okay. We want to hear from everybody, but um, I don't. I want to just try to keep it as brief as we can and, and move into the topics. Before I forget, too, can we get an electronic copy of that sent to the city planner? So yeah. I know we're one or two short here. So if we've got an electronic version of it, that would be great. Yeah. Thanks. What's that mean? Okay. So we have the. Can you pull up the? Uh, I can't really. Oh, you can't. Okay. Um, I, I apologize. I thought the the. Basically, the link would be told about I could go. Um, but basically, just zipping through the master plan, starting from the beginning, you know, obviously it's the, divided through section, paragraph, and subparagraph. Um, but, you know, with all the work for the, the, you know, the vision and vision 2020, um, go right down what I have highlighted, things along the lines of, you know, the vision of our master plan focuses on assuring the positive elements of Concord that are maintained and not compromised as the city grows and changes. Obviously, we feel what we have is a positive element. Um, 
The plan includes a strong focus on preserving and enhancing existing neighborhoods and villages with a goal of improving livability. Um, again, to maintain desirable places to live. Uh, Vision 2020, I know uh, Mr. Kerry spoke to this and alluded to this, that this potentially not being attractive to them, but the opportunity corridor and the other areas of the city that that are, are ripe for development and even repurposing. I mean, I, I, I'm all over the city daily and I see many places and we can speak more to that later. Um, but there are places that are not only already appropriately zoned, uh, are, are appropriate in terms of space, but would also benefit, and it would benefit the city with, you know, again, Cotton Ortho, great practice, reputable practice. If they went here, it would rejuvenate this area. And, you know, 287 South Main Street, you know, Cockroach Theme owns that place, and it's the last, it's going away, they're closing, it just sits there. Um, those are the places I believe as a city, we should be directing, and not just Concord Orthopedics, but any entity looking to, to expand. I mean, why disrupt a well-established residential neighborhood that actually meets the needs and the goals outlined in the master plan as livability, community-oriented, you know, maintaining young families who are raising their kids here, sending them to the schools, working in the city. Why disrupt that when, when there are places that sit vacant and dilapidated that could be actually rejuvenated and rehabbed through a project like this. I mean, you can see the, the thoughtfulness and the work they put in to that design. Imagine if that design went somewhere that would actually then be elevated from their presence, as opposed to a place that's already a really good place. I mean, we have some places in town that aren't, and this place is. Um, so, you know, and, and again, it jives with the, the master plan and aligns with it. Um, you know, and I think folks are going to speak later to, to the proximity, and I know you know various arguments can be made, uh, but Mr. Kerry himself did say, yeah, we recognize there are places throughout the state that do what they want to do that are further away from the hospital, and he did not say it was imperative. He said if he was speculative and saying, I believe if they had a choice, they would be closer. I mean, bear in mind, no matter how close you are to the hospital, unless you're going to throw someone in a golf cart, bring them there, you're still calling concrete fire to come get them and transport them. Uh, I mean, that's... That's another argument that could be made. Um, anyway, so moving through the master plan, again, the, the, the opportunity corridor, which talks about from Horseshoe Pond moving south, uh, you know, along the, the area that used to be owned by BNN Railroad that they, they have recently ceded, uh, and then all the way down to the South End Marsh, you know, being basically that corridor, being the, the according to this master plan, being the you know, the area of, of opportunity. Um, you know, other just key points real quick. Uh, new, new development maintains and reinforces historical patterns of land use and development. Uh, reinforce the essential character of the city. Don't undermine what residents value about the city. I mean, this is all, you know, verbiage from, from the master plan. Um, this one, uh, development does not jeopardize rural landowners, are not financially disadvantaged. Um, uh, in terms of land use, uh, development preserves quality of life, it limits sprawl, uh, a, every development maintains buffers of incompatible uses between other uses to the greatest extent possible in order to limit and minimize undesirable impacts to adjacent land. I think Jim, and uh, it's not hyperbole, but if you were on Jim's deck, uh, as attractive as the, the building that they propose is, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's cool. No one's going to lie about that, right? I mean, you know, vegetated roof, and, and it's a neat building. As attractive as it is, if you're on Jim's deck, it's all you're going to see now. I mean, the, the way their, their land kind of, kind of, you know, kind of eases down in a, in a way and, and, and comes in behind, you know, there's no way, I know, I know Mr. Carey referenced screening and to min, you know, minimizing the, the impact. But um, I don't know how you would buffer those incompatible uses. I mean, a surgical center is very different than sitting on your deck, you know, growing. I mean, I don't know how, how, you'd, how you'd minimize that. Um, don't need to repeat that. That was all opportunity quarter. So this one I found interesting because it was spoken to specifically by Mr. Carey. Um, and even Mr. Uchida's original proposal referenced, hey, this is in the urban growth boundary. You know, we should be good to go. You know, we, have, we have some more leeway here. But what's interesting is if you look at, by definition, residential medium, it specifically says, yeah, this is in the urban growth boundary, but 
it's an area that is focused on maintaining residential areas and ensuring that future residential development should include similar range of uses. Um, you know, it's, you know, I, I know saying, oh, you know, urban world, this is, this is okay. But the reason it's owned RM, it sounds to me anyway, that, that you know, it's owned that way to, to maintain that residential use within the urban world. Um, again, that's a, a lay person's interpretation of it, so. Um, land use policies, uh, let's see, just maintenance with current historical land uses, soil characteristics, flooding potential, wetland and surface waters. Um, I know, you know, you can have the best wastewater engineer in the world, but when you put a big parking lot and a big building, water's gonna go somewhere. Uh, the area's already wet. Um, even, I know, again, this is anecdotal, but when our neighbors put in the paved pathway around the back of the Red Barn, water did change. Um, you know, Pleasant Street itself has changed in the 15 years I've been there. Um, the sidewalk erosion along our section of Pleasant Street, I mean, water is run out of places to go in that area. Uh, again, I'm not a wastewater engineer, but I just saw that and thought that was potentially applicable. Uh, housing, housing goals. Yeah, I know there was a recent uh, study of New Hampshire's at an all-time low of affordable middle-class housing or housing in general. And um, I'm getting to, to my opinion, that just begs the question, why up end, you know, especially when one of the, the topics they speak to in terms of a larger, you know, not just their project, but if by 2030 or 2035 they have the total build-out where every blade of or grass, we're losing good homes. We're losing the homes we want in this city. We're losing the homes that are lived in and maintained by people that we kind of want being active and engaged. Um, so I, I just, again, I just find it hard to believe that this makes sense. When, when we have in our corridor, as small as it may be, or deemed by many, what we have 